Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Star Wars games made for the PlayStation Vita. Angry Birds Star Wars is great. It's Angry Birds but Star Wars themed. And not only this, the game doesn't remain just a reskin of Angry Birds. The levels have new gimmicks, the birds have new gimmicks that make the Angry Birds formula fresh. You still slingshot birds into pigs and birds have unique powers. Well here, add powers is the difference. Each bird has different powers from the original game. Also, I have to praise the controls. You can play the game with buttons, like you would on a PS3. You can play the game using the touchscreen, like you would on a smartphone. And you can also use the rear touchpad and play the game like this. Also, Angry Birds Star Wars has multiplayer. Both online and local co-op multiplayer. You can play local multiplayer with a friend. The game is great. Star Wars Pinball is not a cash in. You would expect from a pinball game like this that it just takes advantage of a license to milk some money out of it. This usually is the case, but not with this one. For this one, some nice effort was put to make the purchase worthwhile. There are 19 tables in the game, and each table has secrets, special gimmicks, cutscenes before starting a table. The tables aren't just some flippers with some basic obstacles and a background picture. Each table feels like a roller coaster, with its lush array of different obstacles, and the visuals are nice too. I like that the game shows me the score like this, it makes me feel good about myself. There is a downside though, a pretty big one. The loading times are way too long for a pinball game. It feels like forever till you finally get into a game. Star Wars Pinball also has multiplayer. You can compete in leaderboards online or play split screen with another player online. So if you're a fan of Star Wars and pinball, you should check out the game. You come for the pinball and remain for the epic tables. Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens is the same game you would get on a PS3 or a 360. Only that here on the Vita the graphics are lower, way lower than the other consoles. It's not even comparable visually. But on the good side, Aside of the different looks, the game is pretty much identical to the big versions. The gameplay is structured in the same way, the story is the same, the levels are the same, you get the exact same puzzles, in the exact same order, in the exact same places. And if you're new to LEGO games, let me try to introduce you. You play as multiple characters, which you can switch whenever you want. Each character has a special ability you get to use for solving puzzles and progressing in the game. You collect studs, which on the Vita are just moving pictures and not 3D models. Oh, and there are 200 characters in the game, each with a special ability. And the side of the basic LEGO formula, if you're used to the old LEGO games, just know that there are some, there is some new stuff too, like shootouts from cover or shootouts in space or puzzles like this. What is nice about the new stuff is that it feels nice, it doesn't feel forced. Which means that they managed to keep the masterpiece formula fresh. It isn't repetitive and it feels fun through and through. If you're a LEGO fan or want to play a relaxing and joyful game, I recommend it to you. And I forgot to tell you about the game, Super Star Wars. Thank you Ren Reuter. I hope I've read your name correctly for telling me about this game and I'm sorry for being so stubborn about including it in a video. Okay, so this game isn't technically a game made for the PlayStation Vita, it's a port. You get a game made in 1992 slapped on the Vita. You get some enhancements, but for the most part the game is just a ROM with a menu. So it's not a Vita game, even if you can play it on your Vita. When this game was made, people didn't even knew what the PlayStation Vita is. But I can understand why people wanted to port the game. It's fun. And the effects are stunning. Even today, the game is good looking. You can see that it's an old school game. Because you can aim only in four directions and you can still feel that the game is difficult. But luckily, there are difficulty settings. Also, it's nice that the game lets you change the way the game looks. You can play the game in a square with a background picture, or you can play it in full screen, or with a black background. Also, you can change the game's looks, if you want it to look crisp, smooth, or sharp. I like these options. Also, I have to warn you with some stuff. 
It didn't bother me, but maybe it's important to you into getting decided if you want to get the game or not. So the game has some difficulty to it. There are some levels where you need to be extra careful where you jump and how you move. But luckily, the Vita version has a feature the SNES version didn't have. You can save your progress whenever you want. You just enter the menu screen and hit save. Also the game takes you around 1 or 2 hours to finish, which is short for today's standards, but was ok back in 1992. And in that one hour you play as Luke, Han and Chewie. You have some vehicular levels too, the game is nice, it lacks modern game mechanics because the game isn't modern, but it's amazing, and it's amazing how fantastic the game remained decades after its release. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.